Well, again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is the AgMIF conference on making climate smart agriculture work. And uh, we've got, I think, a wonderful lineup of speakers. We'd like to thank all of you for uh, taking the time to join us. And uh, we have our organizing committee here. Uh, Cynthia Rosenschweig is the chair of, of our AgMIF coordinating committee here. And uh, we'll be talking more about her in just a moment. Well, my name is Terry Nip. I'm the director for policy and development here at AgMIF. Uh, Alex Ruan is here also uh, with Columbia University and NASA. Our colleague Bruno Basso from Michigan State. And it helps if I stay on the right screen. Greg Kiker from the University of Florida, John Antel uh, from Oregon State, I'm moving things out of the way here, and Soterios. Uh, and Soterios, all these years, I don't say your last name correctly, my apologies, uh, from Iowa State University. The objective, objective, here we go. The objectives uh, for this conference for this week is really to strengthen the scientific basis for scaling effective and sustainable climate smart agricultural systems. We're, we want to recognize the unique requirements of diverse ag agro ecosystems, including row crops, rangelands, and specialty crops. We want to, to be linking with ongoing efforts by the agency, USDA, NASA, EPA, and others. Uh, we want to support and foster public private partnerships and uh, be supportive of, of the legislative process and the structures and the priorities that both the agencies and the legislative branches are developing to help support climate smart agriculture. Along the way, we want to establish a community of practice connecting disciplines, physical, biophysical, social. We're trying to bring together the full range of appropriate expert, experts and expertise, institutions and stakeholders. And thank you all for joining in because that's who we are collectively. Today, we're going to be hearing uh, from several wonderful uh, keynote speakers. Uh, Undersecretary Robert Bonney will be joining us. Uh, he hasn't come on yet, uh, but we're sure he will be here along the way. Uh, similarly, Dr. Cynthia Rosenzweig, uh, who's with Columbia Climate School and NASA, uh, will be talking. And then we'll have several folks talking about how we make that bridge from the goals of USDA to support climate smart agriculture uh, to bring together the science, the modeling, the data, the economics, and, and begin to make that work. We'll also be hearing from Dr. Rakan Lal, who's with Ohio State University, and he's going to be talking about climate and soil carbon sequestrations. What do we know now? What do we wish we knew? What do we need to know? And, uh, and then we'll have a panel uh, doing a deeper dive into uh, what farmers need to know, what the state of the science is, how we begin to bridge from science uh, to, to the modeling effort. And, uh, and, and then we have our wrap up uh, speaker coming from the Food and Agricultural Climate Alliance, which is a, a large group of the major farm and environmental community that have come together uh, to support these critical, critical issues. And we're waiting on, uh, on Bruno Basso. Uh, sorry, Bruno. We're waiting on <laughs> Robert Bonney, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us in a little bit. We'll be checking in with him. Uh, but in the meantime, and uh, with no further ado, I'm very happy to introduce Cynthia Rosenzweig, uh, again, chair of our uh, organizing committee. And uh, we're also very excited. She was recently awarded uh, the World Food Prize. Uh, she's the 2022 laureate, well-deserved after many years of, of being a pioneer in this space of, of bringing climate and agriculture and food system studies and analysis together. Uh, she's with, uh, with NASA, as I mentioned. Uh, she is the co-founder and continual leader of AgMIP. And I'll let her describe that in more detail. And Cynthia, if you don't mind, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Terry. Um, uh, thank you for the congratulations. I'm so thrilled and honored <laughs> about the World Food Prize. But really, I think it's um, it, it's for everybody who's participating in this in this conference because it really the the 
the prize was really high is really highlighting climate change and agriculture. I also think that it's actually good that I'm going to go um, uh, maybe first because um, because I'm going to be introducing AgMIP, um, the the uh, 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 real organizer um, or organizing group of this. Of, of this conference. So let's see. Are my slides now full screen? Can you? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, I'm and I'm so I'm happy to share, uh, introduce AgMIP and uh, talk about how AgMIP uh, interacts with climate change. I uh, and, and ex I uh, we we hope deepens knowledge around climate change, agriculture, and global food systems. But I also put in some recent results on regions as well. So what is AgMIP? AgMIP is a network of over 1,000 agriculture and climate researchers worldwide. Um, and just in the US alone, there are over 200 modelers. What does AgMIP do? AgMIP convenes leading groups to conduct multi-model assessments. Multi-model is, you're going to be hearing that phrase many times um, through the course of, of the conference, of both biophysical and economic and social impacts. Therefore, we've spanned physical, biophysical, and social impacts of practices, technologies, and incentives for current and future climate conditions. So this is to prove that we really are a worldwide, this slide is to prove that we really are, that AgMIP is a worldwide scientific community. And by the way, for anyone who is listening, who is not a member of AgMIP, it's very easy to become one. Um, just go to the AgMIP um, website and uh, send your CV and, and you will join and, and be part of AgMIP. But this is to show from starting from the very first global workshop in 2010, um, uh, we have uh, we work in regions. We work in specific teams. You're going to see more, more about that in a slide that's just coming up. Um, and um, and we're now we just now during COVID, you can see the that we went. We of course, like everyone, we had to go with a virtual meeting, um, and that was from the eighth global. Um, the eighth uh, AgMIP global, global workshop, and there were participants um, from over 90 countries. So that's one of the, as we know, the silver linings of, of, of COVID and going virtual. Uh, but that's to show that it is truly a worldwide network and everyone is welcome. Um, the, the next point that I want to make is that in all of our work, wherever we are thinking about climate change, we need to be cognizant that climate change disproportionately impacts minorities and the poor. So as we are developing our programs we, we, uh, and our responses, and as we're creating the solutions, those solutions must take into account small and minority owned farms, um, uh, disadvantaged groups, um, really, the whole spectrum must be involved um, from, from the beginning of any work that, that we undertake from now on. And this is so that we ensure the, the, the what is what you've probably heard the phrase, just transitions. How do we get there uh, it, to, uh, to develop sustainable, healthy solutions to climate change? And a just transition it ensures environmental sustainability, decent work, social inclusion, and poverty eradication. So that is also that's a fundamental principle as 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 we go as we start um, as we start the conference and the work um, that that we're hope to um, uh, to develop um, from from the conference. So I mentioned that there's lots of things that AgMIP is doing, and these are, I won't go through all of them, but AgMIP has over 40 initiatives. But, it, the, but the fundamental is systematically comparing and improving models. By the way, I is very important. The uh, I in AgMIP stands for two things, both intercomparison, but also improvement. We can't just keep using the same models. We must improve them. 
um, the goal, overall goal, build a more productive, sustainable, resilient, and just just and healthy food system. So I won't go, I'm going around the pet, we call this the pedal diagram, global, starting with um, global economic assessments. And uh, you're going to be um, hearing about um, certainly are the regional ones um, from uh, John Mantle um, shortly. Um, but we do gridded modeling, we do site-based modeling, um, all types. There's, we're not exclusive on which types of models AgMIF uses. Um, we focus on interactions, of course, with water resources, livestock pastures. Um, we have a fantastic pest and disease team, a wonderful new team working on ozone and air pollution, all the things that we need to have to advance the, the science um, and the modeling tools. Data, speaking of data and tools, of course, to make all this happen. At the regional scale, we have a want to have developed a wonderful methodology for integrated assessments and have carried them out in many places around the world and linking the experiments and the models together, right? Because it's still so important in the field. You're going to see a map of all the places where we link to the researchers, research sites in the field. Of course, individual crops, wheat, wheat was the first one. We thought there were going to be 10 to 15 basically we thought there were maybe going to be around 10 wheat models come out and now 40 wheat models around the world have come out of the woodwork and work together um, on the intercomparisons and the improvement and then of course um, cross-cutting themes and I'm going to end there uncertainty aggregation and scaling these are the deep science questions around AGMIP and we have special teams working um, uh, on food shocks, for example. Now we are linking mitigation and adaptation. Um, these very, very deep science areas that that um, that need to put be to that really need to be um, the foundation um, for the solutions. I mentioned that we link to experimental sites. So this one, this I said, I keep writing Alex, Alex Thurain, and I say, we've got to update this. But this was from 2017, all of the research sites that provide data for the model intercomparisons. And you can see all the different crops um, and what, they, what they're used in um, and what types of assessments they're used in. But it's even more than this. There's, 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 there are more sites. But linking and really, really bringing the experimental work and results into the models and then the model needs. So it's a really a two-way street before the experimentation and the modeling. That's a very key part of AgMIP as well. So what, why, what and why, and uh, Terry, Terry uh, I, I introduced this topic of how do we um, uh, really then, um, you know, link, how do we link the data and the models, but then have them, have them contribute as the science foundation to policies. So you can see we, 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 we utilize in the center core scenario sets, Extreme events and shocks are very important, current and future, but sustainable development as well. Then the scales around regions or global, you're gonna see some, ex some examples shortly, uncertainty, risk and resilience. And then there's just a whole panoply of, 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 of areas that, that AGMIP then can and does focus on. Of course, this week we're focused on climate smart agriculture, but the overall goals are to contribute to food security and food policy and both adaptation and mitigation of climate change. So how do we do this? Do we just sit in front of how do the all those 1000 modelers do they just sit in front of their computers and run their models? The answer to that is a resounding no. We always start with stakeholder engagement at the very top of this circle. It's always about participatory science. We call it stakeholder, in AGMIP, we call it stakeholder driven science. So we engage with stakeholders and that's a part of, that's something that's going on in this conference so that we can hear what are the knowledge needs? What do, what do decision makers need? What kind of evidence will help them as policies are developed? And so that's where we start. But also, by the way, we don't just do that once. It's all the way through um, our projects and assessments 
and improvements, we always cycle back. We listen, we cycle back. We're always in listening mode we, we sh and we show updates that we get more feedback and it's truly interactive and participatory. So then we have just we do the data, the multiple models, the with with the scientific communities and those teams, those teams that are represented by the in the pedal diagram, we create protocols so that each modeling group bearing down on a specific topic are doing the same thing. This is one of the fundamental ways that AGMIP is helping to advance the rigor of the science so that we know everyone, all the models are doing the same thing. So we now then get a sense of what both the mean and median of the model results are much in a much more rigorous way, but then also what is the model based on certainty around those results as well. So those are the simulation. And then, of course, I just want to say the final one, analysis and evaluation. What are models? Models are tools for learning. And this is why it's this wonderful, really, AGMIF is this, it's just this amazing co 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 cooperative, collaborative way to improve the analysis and evaluation of these, um, these, these key uh, to provide the key ev the evidence for the key decisions, circling back to the stakeholders. So, just next, want to share a few gl recent global results and a few recent um, regional results. So, this is from the global economics team, um, and that was uh, highlighted in the IPCC special report on land, um, and uh, the. Uh, it shows um, for the shared socioeconomic pathways of a less of, of a more sustainable world to a less sustainable world, going from SSPs one to three, the percent change in population at risk of hunger with climate change um, uh, uh, to uh, by to 2050, and what we can see is that food security will be increasingly affected by projected future climate change, especially under less sustainable scenarios. Um, another uh, AGMIP um, with support from, from USDA uh, undertook a, um, a whole series of studies um, when the IPCC did their uh, 1.5 degree C work. And um, this is really uh, what we call coordinated global and regional assessments because, because we work at both scales, we're actually able to really use them as a reality check. What, is the, what are the global models saying? What is the regional model saying? What, some, what processes come from the global, for example, with prices uh, to the regional? Um, so you can see up at, the le up at the top left, we have change in temperature, this is for the maize growing season for the and change in precipitation, utilizing then multi-model approach to get changes in yields. That's on the, um, on the crop side globally, but we have then um, the, the climate and the crops, um, but then the economics um, were tested and all of this was tested with both 1.5 degree scenarios climate scenarios and two, point, uh, two, two degrees C mit mitigation scenarios. And this has involved, uh, uh, enabled us to assess uncertainty across multiple GCMs, stabilization rates, SSPs, mitigation impacts models, impacts disciplines. So is being, this is the power of protocols to, other, to be able to do this. So what did we find? At the global scale for, for both, this is what's important. There are mixed areas of both positive and negative simulated wheat and maize yield changes with declines in some breadbasket regions at both 1.5 and two degrees C. So this is helping to get ready, right? For, um, and to understand what those um, targets of the UN uh, FCCC are all about. 
This is latest um, uh, latest segment results that were that were highlighted in um, the IPCC AR6 Working Group Two report. Big shout out to the Global Gridded Crop Model Initiative and its leaders Jonas Jägermeier and Christoph Müller. Um, and here, the fo they focused this uh, this latest work with the latest CMIP six, which are the latest climate scenarios, uh, focused on when would regions around the world feel the impact, the emerging emergence of the climate impact? And that um, uh, describes the time when average climate change impacts are projected to occur outside the envelope of historical variability. And the results showed, you can see, especially for maize, that um, negative climate change impacts on maize appear in the 2020s. This is much earlier than was shown in the CMIP-5 earlier climate scenarios. And also more negative effects of the uh, maize yield changes were found in the, in the new um, results as well. So that's um, a look at some of the global results, but let's look at the regional, some recent regional results as well. So what with this, I mentioned that we had developed regional integrated approach in which we realized no one model will suffice at, uh, and both at both scales, but, but it's particularly in regions, it's important. And we developed the integrated assessments with the stakeholders, just as I showed the other diagram. This is, this is another stakeholder diagram that we use as well. Uh, climate, crop and livestock, economic, regional economic models, modelers, and that John I, in um, upcoming um, talk will, will I'm sure describe this in greater detail and that we have the protocols. This is an example of the protocols for the AGMIP regional integrated assessments all online. And also the books are, is all of this is, is captured in two, two volumes with our partners in the regions in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, putting forward the beautiful, beautiful chapters uh, showing um, the results of the RIA. But just coming to this country, and John can speak to this, but uh, he participated um, in um, uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, what we call an RIA, um, and, um, again, um, published a paper showing um, that the regional that that this regional integration of dryland wheat systems in the Pacific Northwest, right here in the U.S., shows economic and environmental potential of climate smart agriculture um, with both reduced tillage and biofuel crops. So this is the kind of result that can come forward from this type of multi-model assessment. Now, you're also going to hear a lot uh, in the next few days from Bruno Vasso. This is this fantastic work that he did in the U.S. Midwest um, with multiple crop models. You see the list um, and uh, what the use of the data set was um, to study both yield and soil carbon um, at 28 sites with five models. And this is, again, this is one of the seminal figures of AGMIP, which is actually showing for a uh, change in soil organic carbon that for the five crop models, what the root mean square error is, and what the mean error is of the, all those. And then the, um, when you do it in the ensemble mode with the multiple models, there is a 14% reduction in the prediction area. So this is very much at the heart of AGMIP science. So uh, this is my last slide um, before, the, before the pictures and the invitation to join AGMIP and to check out AGMIP website. So we are very much interested in supporting climate smart agriculture. Um, we really want to, in, the, in, this, in this week together on the conference, to see how AGMIP and, um, and partners can support climate smart agriculture. So one of the things that, uh, you know, I would say one of the activities that we um, are, uh, could be, uh, could be, that we could be exploring are multi-model regional assessments. 
because they are critical to ensure and demonstrate that programs are effective and scalable. So that's, you know, conducting, setting up this kind of coordinated work. And I've given you several different kinds of examples. Um, so that are uh, related to climate policies and programs. Of course, to always advance economic analyses to complement policy options. This is so important for the just transitions, the, inclu the, the inclusion of the whole spectrum of farmers um, throughout, um, uh, throughout the US. Um, uh, data harmonization tools, absolutely critical to be able to, to do this. Um, so we can contribute to integrated applications and any any work that anything on the data that's collected can because of the AgMF data repositories and the data um, the way that it's um, organized um, is able to be used in multiple applications it's not just one off and finally to develop specific and we are doing this with uh, some of our, with an international project right now, actually in Bangladesh, to develop aggregate protocols for inclusion of environmental justice, gender and nutrition, and food security in climate change assessments. So with that, um, I'm so looking forward to uh, to the conference. Uh, thank you so much, Terry, for for uh, organizing. Really, Terry was the lead organizer. It's absolutely fantastic, and thank you to. Um, Eric and Maria Camilla and the whole team who is making this happen for, for all the participants, for the protocols, up-to-date events and news, and to join AgMIP, all welcome. Please visit www.agmip.org. Thank you very much. And now um, I think, Robert, what we were saying to you was that actually the introduction to AgMIP, I think actually might wor have worked first, And but it's great you're now joining and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thanks.